morning, Marasini's audience, bill of lading, who can show whom and how. That was an interesting breakfast seminar organized by Emirates Maritime Attraction Center today. And uh, we have with us Mr. Richard Stroop, who is the partner of uh, HF, uh, HFW, who can tell us more about the bill of lading and the more the challenges are facing this sector. Thank you for being with us in Marasini TV. My pleasure. So first of all, would you please tell us more about what is contained in the Bill of Lading? Oh well, um, Bill of Lading um, serves three functions. When you put goods on board a ship for delivery from A to B, it, it works as a, a receipt for the goods, so that you've given your goods to someone else, they give you a receipt. Uh, it also evidences the contract you've entered into between yourself and the, and the carrier. And it also represents uh, the title to the goods so that when the goods arrive at the other end, you can present your bill of lading and, and get your goods. And what are the protection that can be given to the subcontractors? All right, well, I was talking in the, uh, uh, in the seminar about um, in situations where a, a non-vessel owning carrier, an NVOC, has issued a bill of lading and it subcontracts the, the voyage to someone else, uh, the ways in which uh, cargo claimants sometimes try to avoid privity of contract and sue the, the carrier directly. And so we looked at uh, sub-bailment on terms, Himalaya clauses and circular indemnity clauses, which are uh, legal and contractual devices to, designed to protect a carrier in the event that claims are brought directly by, um, by cargo claimants in total bailment with no privity of contract. I'm sure that you're facing a lot of issues related to this, uh, like the bill of lading on a daily basis, especially for the ship owners. Would you please highlight like one of the most controversial issues that you have been facing for the past year, for instance, that was really uh, like demanding and it's like uh, it really required a lot of work from your side? Um, there are a few things spring to mind, but, but one that really stuck out is uh, we've been working on a case uh, that's recently finished called the Yusuf Sepnioglu where um, cargo claimants and charters tried to sue a P&I club directly in Turkey. And we were successfully able to obtain anti-suit injunctions in the UK to prevent the claimants from proceeding in, in Turkey against the P&I club. Because um, potentially it could have quite wide-ranging effects if claimants have uh, direct rights of action against insurers as opposed to going against the ship owners themselves. And what advice can you give to uh, the lawyers in order to further help the ship owners? Well, um, I'm not sure lawyers need any, uh, any advice from me, but uh, I mean, it's, it's not just ship owners, it depends upon who you're representing. So whether you're representing clubs, owners, charterers, operators, receivers, shippers, um, it's all about um, acting diligently in your client's best interests. During your presentation, you mentioned about the BNI clubs and the rule of BNI clubs. Would you please uh, further elaborate to our audience about uh, the rule of BNI clubs in order to avoid all the quarrels between uh, that could happen to the ship owners? Sure. Well, um, PNI clubs are the liability insurers of ship owners. Uh, they're mutual insurers, which means um, basically ship owners get together and they pool their resources and agree to insure one another in respect of all claims and liabilities arising and um, there's an international group of 13 P&I clubs and they, um, they uh, look after the majority of the world's tonnage and provide um, liability insurance. And finally, uh, since today you were actually presenting your speech at an EMAC seminar, so how do you find it beneficial to the shipping industry? Oh, I, I think EMAC does a lot of good work and um, hopefully it's going to be a, a dispute resolution forum that's taken up enthusiastically by, um, uh, by maritime parties in the region. Um, these, the breakfast seminar series I think is quite a good uh, way of bringing the industry together, uh, sharing know-how, knowledge uh, and you know, promoting, uh, promoting EMAC generally. Thank you so much for, the, for your time for the interview today. Uh, no problem, you're welcome.